locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Diamonds are forever, and so is Ric Flair. Woo! I can agree with that. That's right. How awesome is that, huh? Yeah. Your woo is getting better. Hey, listen, man, I've been practicing because I don't want to hear your your nonsense about it. Well, I just want to make sure anytime if you woo for Ric Flair himself at some point in your life, he doesn't just punch you right in the face. (laughs) I'm trying to help. Yeah, thanks a lot. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling. I am the Duke, and yes, I enjoy doing pro wrestling impersonations, and I'm going to Keep on doing them, no matter what my illustrious producer, the Boston bad boy, Iron Mike Pelosi, says. And I'm always going to have something negative to say. Yeah, that's... Uh, at, at this point. That's I, your I feel problem. like forever it's going to be, because you're showing no signs of improvement. You are such a contrarian. Listen, we're so glad you could join us, folks. We have another set of your fan-submitted questions, a.k.a. Ask Duke. We'll also be reviewing Clash of the Champions, you know, that pay-per-view this past weekend. We have Silver Fox from Duke's wrestling crew to help us out with that. And then we have the pastor of wrestling. We're talking about Kevin West. We're going to be talking Ric Flair promos with that guy. Can't wait. All of that plus run the ropes. But before we get to any of that, I want to thank you. That's right, you, the fans that continue to listen to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. You're spreading the word. You're letting the whole world know that you love Duke Loves Wrestling. Okay, and I love you too. Head over to Twitter. Head over to Facebook. Make sure you like us on those mediums. You can also go to YouTube and iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Come on. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. That's what it's about. We interact with each other because that's the way it should be. Jack. It's time to run the ropes. I give my opinion on the top five stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. WrestleStar 3 is gaining buzz all over the world. That's right, folks. Everyone can't stop talking about WrestleStar 3. Now, remember, that's the two-day pro wrestling extravaganza that's taking place on November 18th and 19th live at the Patea Boxing World Stadium in Thailand. Chief Aram Mir is set to team up with Polina to take on that no-good Eurasian Dragon and his partner Tyra in a mixed-person tag team match. I'm telling you right now, Aram Mir is going to destroy them, just like Big Sam is going to destroy some punks as well. Middle Kingdom Wrestling will be represented by the one and the only Big Sam. And listen, Dalton Bragg, Selfie King, even the Slam, All of you will be shaking in your boots because you are in for some destruction and some pain. Head over to MiddleKingdomWrestling.com. Head over to Middle Kingdom Wrestling on YouTube for more information about WrestleStar 3. Will Mike Elgin defeat Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship? That's right, folks. This is a feud that's a decade in the making. We're talking about Big bad Mike Elgin, he's going to take on that no good Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor Heavyweight Championship. This is happening live on Friday, September 30th at the Ring of Honor All-Star Extravaganza 7. I, for one, hope Elgin destroys that punk Adam Cole because he's an overrated, no good punk, Bay Bay. (laughs) WWE signs a big name from the United Kingdom. Oh, you better believe it. We are talking about the one, the only, Tommy N. He is a major star from This Is Progress Wrestling. That's the promotion out of England. He's officially signed with the WWE. You can expect to see this popular and experienced talent make his official debut over the next few months. And listen, let me tell you something. He's like the second coming of CM Punk. He has the tattoos, the alternative look, and he's a guy that can really get it done in the ring. Stay tuned because this is going to be awesome. (laughs) Raw has its lowest rating ever. Yeah. Hey, listen, they just keep going down. It's jumping off the page here. Monday Night Raw had the worst episode ever. Now, look, before Boston Bad Boy starts patting himself on the back, we got to remember. 
They were up against not only Monday Night Football, but they were also up against the presidential debate. Don't worry, folks. Nothing to be alarmed about. They will rebound, especially when they don't have these big things ahead of them there. But stay tuned because this is a developing story. Dixie Carter leaning towards selling TNA to WWE. Yeah, believe it or not, this is serious business here. WWE are at the final stages of potentially purchasing TNA wrestling. What they really want is that tape library, and I don't blame them because that is worth a lot of money. But the organization itself, not so much. I expect WWE, if they do officially take over TNA, they're going to close the company down. They're going to take that tape library and incorporate it into the WWE network. And, hey, TNA, they will be no more, just like ECW, just like WCW. But that's okay with me because if Vince McMahon is running it, I know that it will live forever in the tape library. You've heard what I think. What do you think? Head over to Facebook, head over to Twitter, type in Duke Loves Wrestling. Let me know. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm a fool? You talk here. We'll talk nonsense. That's the way it goes, folks. And that does it for Run the Ropes. Up next, Silver Fox joins us to review Clash of Champions. This is Alexa. And this is Brianna. And we're Sugar and and Spice. And And you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. Wrestling. Boston Bad Boy, we had a great show last week where we had Sugar and Spice, Alexa and Brianna. Yeah, that was great. And you sent me some cool uh, videos of their uh, vines or whatever they were of them doing some moves that I would never in a million years attempt. Let me let me tell you something. They've been busting their butt at the Texas Wrestling Academy with Rudy Boy Gonzalez. And you can tell it's all business with them. Oh my goodness. You, ladies out there, you better watch yourself because Sugar and Spice <laughs> are right. coming for you. That's right. Okay, Folks, you can head over to uh, YouTube. Type in Duke Loves Wrestling. That was episode 24 you can hear the great interview with these future stars of pro wrestling alexa and brianna sugar and spice this week we are showing listener appreciation okay and we have one of the most celebrated members of duke's wrestling crew here to break down wwe clash of champions with us folks welcome the lovely the talented silver fox how are you silver fox hey Oh, man. Hey, listen, another day in paradise. Okay. Absolutely. It, you know, that night of that, uh, excuse me, Clash of Champions was a, a heck of a pay per view. And we wanted to reach out to you and, and just get your thoughts on how it went. So let's move on to the cruiserweights. We had TJ Perkins taking on the Brian Kendrick, Brian Kendrick, the man who was trained by Rudy Boy Gonzalez, a big fan of the show, big friend of the show. What did you think? What did you like about this match up here? Um, you, did you watch the match? Did you actually some, watch yeah. the match? <laughs> yeah, see, this is why I'm having a hard time with this. Um, was, in the, was this like the eighth hour of Raw? Yeah, was, you, this, was, this, was she maybe blanking out? This was the bathroom this, break match. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, well, for one thing, I'm not too terribly interested in the cruiserweights anyway. But I, <laughs> if I had to pick the thing that I liked the best, it would have probably just been um, the knee bar. And that was, I just think that that's a, a cool move. But I was not at all interested in this match, not okay. even a little bit. Wow. So, so you're you, you're just telling us what you don't like about the match. You you rolled that already in. So, what do you rate it then on a scale of one to five? What do you rate this match? Here? A one. Whew. Wow. Except T- for the headbutt at the end. Okay. He hugged him and then headbutted him. So I would have gave that like a two. Kendrick Maybe. headbutting T.J. Perkins. You like the bad guy headbutting the champion, the good guy. Yeah, that's what you liked the most about the match. I thought the match was okay. It it it, it told a decent story. I, I'd give it a three as well. Um, moving it wasn't on, as fast as I expected a cruiserweight match to be. Like you know, typically there is lots of flying and moving and, and going and going and going, and it just wasn't that. Yeah, they were toned down a little bit there. Now yeah. you know who wasn't toned down. The next match, Sheamus versus Cesaro. Cesaro. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what did you like about that match? I like that whole match. The entire match, start to finish, was like one of the better matches. They're physical. They were fighting. There wasn't a whole lot of, you know, missing moves. I I just, I loved it. And what didn't you like about the match? I didn't like the end, which is probably, from what I'm understanding from a lot of my friends, probably a general consensus. 
I didn't I didn't like the end. And on a scale of one Let to five, me that. I didn't like that it the way that it ended. But I'm, I appreciate that they stopped it. I just didn't like that it had to stop. Okay, that's a, that's an interesting on a scale of one to five. What do you what do you score it? Mm, four. So I'm just curious because you know I'm always wondering about our fans and 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 Duke, you you interact so much more than I'm able to with the fans. Fog, I feel like people when they're when they're looking at matches or just in general, they're comparing it to something you know early on, like when you first got into wrestling. There, there was some sort of standard that you do, you know you, you saw stuff that you were really interested in. What was your experience when you first became a fan? Uh, who were the guys? What were those matches and 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 those guys that were were going at it that sort of informs your opinion on what's happening now? I'm just curious. Well, I mean, I I literally I'll be 38 in like a month and some change. I've literally been watching wrestling my whole entire life. That's great. So I've been watching since 78. So you're going way back. Yeah. So I mean, you know, Hulk Hogan was wrestling back then, and um, you know, well, maybe not right then, but you know. Um, Iron Sheik and um, Big John Studd yep. and, um, you know, those guys, the Junkyard Dogs, they were all really big when I was little, but I don't know that they would last now. Interesting, because we because were... Because it's so yeah. much more physical now, and there's so much more fighting. I think, I think we were talking to Steve Cox about, you know, has the industry changed? And is it is it better? Is you know are there too many flippy moves? Is it is it are people working stiffer or, or is it is it would the guys? Be, and that's an interesting point you made because I feel like the consensus among the older guys is that they would clean up against these newer guys. And and someone who's watched it as it from the fan side of it, it's interesting for you to say that you don't think they would they would last. Yeah, I don't. Not not that they maybe wouldn't last, but I think that it would be a different kind of match. Right. Because if you watch an old you know, like an old match, say like um, when Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man were tag team partners. The Mega Powers. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you watch a match that they were in and then you think about um, like a big tag team now. So if you think about Enzo and Cass, Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man and Enzo and Cass, first of all, have two completely different wrestling styles, but they didn't fight as much back then as they do now. So back then, where it was maybe a little more technical and it was a little more wrestling-ish, now it's more like fighting. And I don't know that that they would be able to fight. More like, like a street fight. Right. Well, that, that may be yeah. the influence of USC. Uh, uh, UFC there, right? That's a, that's a good point there. Listen, yeah. let, let's jump to... So wait a second. What do you rate the, the Sheamus and Cesaro match? Oh, um, probably a four. A four. Okay. It was a yeah. stiff match, and I agree with you. I don't. I didn't agree with yeah. the ending of that match, but I would. I would have to give it a four as well. That's good stuff. Chris Jericho versus Sami Zayn. What did you like about that match? It was a little. It was a little slow through like the first few minutes. Like it, you could kind of tell when the match was getting ready to be over because that's when it picked up and that's when it got good. There was more back and forth, and more. You know, they were going back and forth at each other. The first, like, I don't know, maybe, I want to say maybe like five, six minutes, it was just kind of dragging along. It was one of those matches where you're just like, uh. And then when it kind of got ready to kind of be at the end of the match, it picked up immediately, and that's kind of what I wanted to see the whole match. What didn't you like about the match? Honestly, at, kind of at the end of the match, when um, Jericho had Sami Zayn in the wall, and um, he just was kind of laying there like he didn't think he, like he wasn't going to try even attempt to get out of it. And then at the very end, he was like, okay, I guess I will. I don't know why that irked me so much, but that seriously worked my nerves. I was like, are you just going to lay there? I was like screaming at the TV. I'm sure you were. going to lay there and like cry and shake your head. Like, <laughs> Listen to you, worry. though. So, so what is, on a scale of one to five, what do you rate the match to? Um, probably a three. It wasn't, it wasn't the worst match of the night. Okay. Okay. I don't disagree with you there. And, and you know, I'm just glad that Sami Zayn got it. From Chris Jericho, because that's Sami Zayn, that's smiley face little so and so. I'm glad Chris Jericho gave him the business, okay? Because I'm hoping when... that between this KO thing, that you know he is the little jealousy that he's got about the whole KO thing, and then this thing with Jericho, I'm hoping will kind of bring him over to the dark side a little bit. When you say him, who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Him, Sami Zayn. Zayn. Well, you never know. Maybe he will uh, yeah, turn into a bad I think guy. That, that little bit of dark. I think might just push him right over the top. 
Folks, we're talking to the Silver Fox. She's one of the the Duke's wrestling crew fans. She's a great person. She's an advocate, and she loves and knows her wrestling. Okay. Indeed, I do. Can, now, I, can I jump in? I'm just curious how anyone can be a fan of Duke, um, oh as God. big a fan as you are. This guy. And basically <laughs> drinking his Kool Aid. I just, uh -huh. I'm sitting here listening and I'm just trying to. It's that sweet Kool Aid, okay? Yeah. It's the sweet Kool Aid. <laughs> well, I like Kool Aid sweet. Are you kidding me? Well, who doesn't? I know, but I mean, that's no excuse here to, to I mean, because half the stuff he says, at least, is wrong. Half of his no, opinions are incorrect. Me. Well, all right, 53%. Don't let him encourage you there, all right? This, oh, this guy. I gotta, I'm, curi I'm curious, Fox, because uh, you're such a huge advocate of the show, and obviously, like you said, been watching since the 70s. Do you see yourself uh, being in your 70s and still being a fan, still going to shows? Absolutely. You know, do, 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 do you think you can bring it all the way? And have you encountered anybody that's that age? Because I don't think I ever have somebody in their, their 70s that's uh, at a show. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I live in Atlanta, so the, the fan base here is ridiculous I and right. it, it's babies to elderly and everything in between that's a great cross section oh yeah that's right yeah. that's right i'll be there so as long as they let me sit up front i will be at every show i can get to so when you now you talk about being at front in every show what did you think about the charlotte sasha banks and bailey match we're talking about the ladies here what did you think about that match so i i think i was ex i don't know i don't know what i was expecting but whatever it was i didn't get it uh -oh. <laughs> um, it was slower. The match was slower than I expected. I, I don't know. Maybe I thought it was going to be like a little faster paced match, but Bailey was the punching bag for ninety five percent. And she deserved every punch she every got. Okay. And I'm I'm glad that they are doing her the way that they are doing her because when she finally gets done being the punching bag, she is going to be phenomenal. No, she's not going to be phenomenal because Sasha yes, Banks is, is going to knock her head off. All right, that, that's the well, end of that. Okay, well she. We're, I love her. No, we're not going to sit I'm here and put up with you talking about anything. Are you are you saying you love Sasha Banks? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So I can't take this agreement. Yeah. It's making me sick, yeah, this no. agreement here. This, no. I don't like no. it. No, this is a no, Sasha I... Banks show, okay? She's from <laughs> Boston. Her. She represents Boston, Jack, and that's where we're at. Hey, it's Sasha Banks all the way, the boss. Yes, I love her. What... Yeah, Bailey, Bailey was the punching bag mm -hmm. the entire <laughs> match. Scale of one to five. What do, you, what, do you, what do you give the match? Scale of one to five. Um... Probably a three. Okay, I, I, I would. Have, after I all that, a three. I, I know. That's, <laughs> that was a long conversation to go for three. I'm sorry. Underwhelming well, match. See, this is why I got a three, Bailey. Because had Bailey not been in the match, I probably would have given it a four. I'm with it. Ba Bailey is still Bailey trying to get her feet her. underneath her on the main roster. You're absolutely yeah. right. Here we go. Here we go about Bailey. Yeah. The two of you. She's no good. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to Roman Reigns. That piece of garbage, by yeah. the way. I can't stand him. And going up against Rusev. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what was that? What was that? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, dude. You know how I feel about Roman Reigns. Go ahead. On. I don't even want to know what you liked about the match after you made all that noise. What didn't you like about the match? It was over too quickly. Um, <laughs> That's right. right. They cut into my time of looking at him. Oh, exactly. Oh, we knew where that was this going. This is ridiculous. Nothing. But you know what? They're two big guys, and they match up well together. I, I like the match. Even if it wouldn't have been Roman Reigns, if it would have been somebody else, Rusev's size and, you know, kind of in his kind of, I don't know. I don't know, but. It was a terrible I, I match, a and the match. fact that you keep trying to talk it up because you little crush on that's Roman right. Reigns. This is that's so embarrassing. Obvious. She's stumbling. I, listen, I, I'm, I'm I ashamed to even hear what you're saying right now. This is embarrassing. <laughs> but you know, but it yeah. wasn't a bad match. Dude. Yeah, right. It was a whole lot of moves. There okay. weren't any miscues. Okay, yeah, yeah. All I hear is mm, Roman, mm, Roman, Roman. Yeah, yeah, okay. Roof of tantrum was funny. Yeah, what, what do you give it on a scale of one to five? Uh, Four. The only thing good about that match was seeing Lana out there, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay, the last match well, when of the Rusev night. Rusev kicked Roman Reigns in the mouth, though. You got to tell me. You can't try to tell me that wasn't good. Well, Roman Reigns deserved a kick in the mouth. He, I hope he gets another fifty of them. I mean, I can't stand him. He's you on know, John Cena the hate, level. The hate is kind of spewing out of you right hey, now. Hey, I'm going to tell the truth about that punk Roman Reigns. Hey, John Cena does great in that hefty uh, trash bag. Did commercial. you see that foolish <laughs> commercial? With I saw that it about John eight Cena times the other night. Flexing his 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 his. Uh, and of course, pecs. I thought of you thinking, "Oh my God, there's people like you that got this guy Cena. selling hefty trash bags." I know. Yeah, that's your fault, there, folks. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the last match of the night, the championship match: Kevin Owens versus that no good Seth Rollins. 
What did you like oh. about the match? Oh, man. Everything. What didn't you like about the match? Um. Oh, man. What didn't I like about the match? Um. I didn't like the ending. Um, what are you giving on a scale of one to five? If she says three, I'm hanging up on it. I know everything's been a three. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny because I'm very like, hard to please. Yeah. Four, yeah. Four. <laughs> I'm sensing You're a gonna theme. give that match a four. That's it. All right, all right. So overall, what do you give the entire pay per view? Uh, on what a one to five. Between one and five, yes. Um, a three and a half. Oh my God! See, you know what we call that? We call that indecision. That's yeah. You know what? You're that's right. That's what we call that. You, you, it's time. You got to right. commit. That you got to commit. You got to okay. fish if or I cut commit, bait. That's it. I'm going down though. Yeah, I'm sure it was a terrible <laughs> pay per view. It's one of the worst of the year. I mean, come on. You know. Okay, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna go with the three. Oh, oh, oh okay. See okay. that Roman three. Reigns? You see what I did to you? That's right. <laughs> even, that's right. Even with the four that I gave Roman Reigns. Yeah. Still with a three. Listen, Silver Fox. On behalf of the entire Dukes Wrestling crew, really appreciate you. You are a, a fantastic advocate for the crew. You Thank show up you. to events, you hold up signs, you do the whole nine yards for us, and, and you're a prime example of why our show and the entire crew continues to be successful. So we'll definitely have you on again sometime, oh. all right? Thank you, darling. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Up next, we bring in the pastor of wrestling to break down Ric Flair. Woo! You're locked in to Duke Loves Wrestling. Join Duke's wrestling crew on Facebook for more exclusive content. Now, back to the show. Now, Buddy Landell, it's so hard for me to sit back here in this studio looking at a guy out here hollering my name when last year I spent more money on spilled liquor in bars from one side of this world to the other than you made. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, woo, wheeling dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. Woo! Uh. Folks, what you heard right there is the nature boy Ric Flair OK, I, I can listen to that every morning and get motivated to go out there and make something happen. Jack, you got that right. Ric Flair would talk you into coming down to the show and spending your hard earned money to see the greatest, the man with it all, do what he does best. And that's kick butt in the ring and look good doing it. OK, so, folks, I wanted to bring on a special guest who can give some context about wrestling promos. Okay, we're talking about a wrestling historian. We're talking about a guy who understands the business going back decades. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the pastor of wrestling. How are you, pastor? Doing great, man. How are you? Very well. Listen, when you hear... The spilt liquor promo. What type of feeling does that invoke inside of you? Oh, man. <laughs> spilt liquor. He's talking to Buddy Lindell. First thing that comes to mind is that I think Flair's looking at Lindell as being an imitation. Uh-oh. This is somebody who's trying to imitate me. And, and we, we know this. And, you know... Um, before Flair mentioned the spill liquor part, you know, Landia had walked past him. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Into the ring. Okay. And if you, go, if you go back and if anybody look at the interview, you know, even though Flair had on shades, you can watch his neck. He's watching them go past him. Uh-oh. So now this is like a threat to him. And then here comes the famous spill liquor part. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you, now, you were a young person... Uh, when this originally aired, right? Correct. So, so the 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 pastor of wrestling is a young kid down in Atlanta, Georgia, and he turns on his television. He he sees Ric Flair talking about spilt liquor and diamond rings and all these things here. When you were a kid, 
did you even understand all the things he was talking about? No, not at all. You know, I didn't really get the the spiel look apart. What I saw as a kid is that this is Ric Flair. Uh, Ric Flair is the top guy. Mm. He's the man. And nobody can out-talk Ric Flair. So and, I'm looking at Ric Flair and hey, this is my show, this is my interview, and you just walked past me, now you're being disrespectful. Wow. Now, here you are, years later, and you go back and you take a look at a promo like that, which really is considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, promo of all time. What are your thoughts now that you have a little more of an understanding of what he's talking about? Looking at it now, and what I realized about the NWA guys back then, it was a shoot. It was slash work, slash shoot. When you when you say shoot, what do you mean by that? Oh, you know, it, it's not script. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm going to kind of move away from, you know, what, what's script, what we know as being script today. Mm-hmm. You know, back then, what, you know, you hear nowadays that when the wrestlers go out, you know, they told in the back, this is what you say, this is what you don't say. Back then, there was nobody to give a script. You went out there, you said what was on your mind. So now, here's Buddy Landale walking by, and now you're disrespecting me. This is an imitation. You want to be just like me. You know, I'm the champ. This guy's nothing. And Flair went, he gave a shoot. It was real. This was not no script. This is real talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, you, now listen, we're talking to the pastor of wrestling. He's breaking down the Ric Flair spilt liquor promo. Let me ask you something, Pastor. Yes, sir. Here we are, and throughout decades, because that was, what, 1985, 1986? Yeah, yeah, 85. Here we are so many years later, and so many folks, we're talking rappers, we're talking uh, football players, we're talking entertainers just in general, they've all mimicked that promo was was this spilt liquor promo the the greatest uh, disc record ever? Oh yeah, yeah. This was a disc album. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. It was a disc album. Think about it. Now, if you go back and look at that interview from the beginning, you know Landell wasn't the only person he talked about. He mentioned Magnum. He mentioned Dusty. But you you don't go back and think about Dusty and Magnum in his interview. But you'll always remember him going off on Buddy Lindell. That's the truth. And he took it to a whole nother level. Did this did this hurt Buddy Lindell when when Ric Flair ran the man down? I mean, the fact that he had to point out that Ric Flair made so much money that he was buying liquor and spilling it, and it was still more money than Buddy Lindell made it in it all year the previous right. year. Did that hurt Buddy Lindell? Uh, I think it hurt him in heaven. And the reason I say that, let's look at it today. Today, it probably would happen. You know why? Because we have the internet and so many people probably trying to Google to see who is Buddy Lindell. Good point. Good point. So, with that, yeah, that probably could happen. Career-wise, yeah, it probably did hurt him. Mm. <laughs> because now you're coming at Buddy Lindell as you're nobody. If I spent more money on spilled liquor, mm. and, and what could spill, what, how much that could be a night? $100, $200? <laughs> <laughs> than what you made all year. It was cold, man. It was cold. I mean, he really went after him. You know, let's talk about, because you're from Atlanta, Georgia. Correct. Which we know that is a wrestling hotbed. In fact, we, we call it flare country. That's Well, one of them. That's right. <laughs> one of them. One of them. You got a chance to see Ric Flair from the very beginning of his career. Talk about Flair's interviews in the beginning compared to at this point? Did you did you notice any differences there? Yeah. Th- at this point, you hear a more Ric Flair with confidence now. He's a little cocky now, but it's confidence when he speaks. Mm. Did, did he um, lack confidence in the beginning? You know, I don't think he lacked confidence in the beginning, but if you go back to the beginning of a lot of Ric Flair interviews, you know, say from the late 70s, even up to maybe around 81, 82. You don't really hear the cocky, confident Ric Flair. I think he was trying to find his niche. You know, uh, we had a conversation earlier about Ric Flair talking, and, you know, in the 70s and the mid-Atlantic days, you can hear more of a southern draw. 
Oh. Because, you know, he idolized Dusty. Mm-hmm. Dusty Rhodes, so, you're talking about. That's right. So when he come, when he came in and he started speaking, you could hear a little southern, you know, the, um, the nature boy woos, you know, <laughs> little southern twang behind it. Yes. And actually, he wasn't even calling himself the nature boy then. He was just Ric Flair. He was just Ric Flair. That's right. right. So you just hear a little southern twang. But then, years later, you know, he had to find himself. Mm-hmm. He found his niche. And look what we are today. That's true. Because, you know, Ric Flair, as a, as a kid, he idolized the American dream Dusty Rhodes. That's right. Dust, Dusty was already in the wrestling business, and Flair was literally watching him wrestle. In fact, he when he came along, he, he tried to be rambling Ricky Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes' cousin. That's right. That's what he wanted his first gimmick to be. And they told him, no, man, you got to be your own guy. That's right. You know, so you're absolutely right. He started off with that southern twang, and, and over time— he got back to his, his normal cadence, how he naturally talks, but he just turned the volume up a little bit. Yeah, even if you go back and look at the old interviews when he was trying to imitate uh, Dusty, look at his dress, how he was dressing. Okay. You know, the tie-dye on, you know, the tight shirt, you know, the, the little head, uh, head gear he had around his head. Mm, Dusty Rhodes all the way, right? He was trying to be Dusty. Yeah. I think he was trying to be a, a mixture of Dusty and superstar Billy Graham. Okay. 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 Yeah. We know about superstar Billy Graham, the man that, that talks about uh, man of the hour, man of the power, too sweet to be sour. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We know about we know about superstar Billy Graham. Listen, when when we think about wrestlers and when they talk about hitting their stride, they talk about that sweet spot right around the 10-year to 12-year mark. Now, Ric Flair started off at about 1972. So right. when he did the spilt liquor promo, he literally is right around 85, 86. He's really hitting that sweet spot as far as you finally understand the business. Right. What happened when Ric Flair hit that 1985 year in particular? What, what, what changed? Growth, maturity. Hmm. You find yourself. You find out who you really are. And I think what what we heard in 1985 in that interview, that's Ric Flair. And and you listen to a lot of his podcasts and you listen to a lot of other people's uh, podcasts and interviews, those who know him personally. You always hear them say, this is Ric Flair. Hmm. That's who Ric Flair really is. It wasn't the gimmick no more. Now it's, I'm going to be me. That's right. That's right. The best. The best. That's the best. Now, That's the best. Now, as a pastor. Correct. Have you learned anything from Ric Flair? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's that? A lot. What's that? What's that? What's, what's the number one thing that you've learned from Ric Flair that you incorporate into your sermons there, Pastor? Have confidence in everything you say. Okay. You got to believe what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, that's the truth. When, when Flair speaks, he believes in every word he's saying. That's the truth. That's yeah. it. And that, and because of that, he makes you believe. That's right. He makes you believe. That's right. So when, when I speak, I believe every word that I say. Have confidence in it. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Do you think that watching Ric Flair promos is something that today's wrestlers, could they learn something from Ric Flair promo of, of yesterday? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They can and the key is being yourself, finding your niche, but being yourself. Hey, listen, if, if, if the wrestling pastor says it, then it must be true. You know, to, just to, to wrap things up here, give us, a, give us your own Ric Flair impersonation, Pastor. Give, give us a little something there. To be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! That's right. That's right, folks. You heard it there. The wrestling pastor coming all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. That's NWA country. That is Ric Flair country. And he just set you straight there, Jack. Thank you very much, Pastor. We'll have you on again soon. Woo! Up next, the Boston Bad Boy has more of your listener-submitted questions, a.k.a. Ask Duke. But before we get to any of that, I have to remind you to head over to Barnyard Cheese. That's right, Barnyard Cheese over at 149 Avenue C between 9th and 10th Streets in New York City. You know, Boston Bad Boy, last week I told you about the Popeye salad. Yes, that was the salad with the bacon included, which that's, is always a great salad. That's right. you got to get your spinach to get those muscles that's up, right. Jack. But this week, listen, 
I'm going back to the sandwiches. Yeah. Okay. Say hello to Vito. Uh oh. My great grandfather was named Vito. That's no lie. Oh, look at that. Look at that. They they may have named it after him. <laughs> yeah, probably. Grandpa Vito. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Don Vito. Don Vito. Oh, jeez, this guy. Let's check out these ingredients. Yeah. Parma prosciutto. Oh, the prosciutto. Sweet soppressata. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's double meat right there. Listen, you can't go wrong with you that. You know what I'm saying? Fresh mozzarella, sun-dried tomatoes, fresh basil, extra virgin olive oil, and an aged balsamic all on a baguette. Duke, when are you going to take me down to New York City? Hey. Get me a delicious sandwich. I'm starving over here. Take the sandwich. Leave the, the, the cannoli. Who knows? <laughs> you know? Stop. Leave, leave the gun. Take Leave the gun, take the sandwich. Well, I don't want to talk about guns. We're talking about cannolis <laughs> and sandwiches here. Come on, come on. Boston bad boy, stop depriving yourself of deliciousness. I'm asking you to take me down there. When are we going to go? I'm starving. Well, we got to go. But before we get there, head over to barnyardcheese.com for more info. Enjoy. See you do it to a concert that just don't care. But one thing I do care about is Duke's wrestling. And I got what the guy has nothing but love for the business. I'm telling you, listen, the pastor of wrestling, he was something else, man. Yeah, he was great. You know, he, he really loved his uh, his Ric Flair stuff, and he knows what he's talking about, which is even That's better. a nice change of pace for this podcast. Oh, my goodness. Because we don't know what the hell we're... Uh, you, especially you. Oh, uh, Me, obviously, here. but, I mean, well, someone would expect you to know what you're talking about. Well, the other thing, what do you think of uh, Silver Fox? She was great. Yeah, she's... Yeah, she, uh, she was... You know, we got to get her to take some positions here, though. She can't just keep saying three all the time. Indecisive. <laughs> yeah, you got to be... You, you, how many wrestling matches in pro wrestling end in a tie? <laughs> well, actually, Has there was it ever one. happened? It, there actually was one because it was a no contest, they called it. That all was right. the Sheamus and, and Cesaro match. All right, recently? That was on the pay-per-view? Oh, okay, yeah. so maybe that's where she got the... Yeah. Because uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't catch the pay-per-view, so... But it doesn't happen often. No. 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 So well, she needs to win win or lose. That's where right. Where are we at here? That's right. But listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If she wants to come and beat you up for making fun I will, of her. I, I, okay. will, I will run away as I do from every threat. She is a silver fox. I believe it. Okay. She'll hunt you down. All right. Let's get to this question. So yeah. What, 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 what do you got for us this week for Ask Duke? All right. So we got a couple of questions as usual mm -hmm. and a couple of uh, aliases as usual. <laughs> no one can use their real name around us. It's, it's wrestling. Everyone I, has I, a is gimmick. Every, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's either that or everybody's in the witness protection program. It, 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 that's probably more like it. I'll tell All you. All right. First question comes from Kumal, the pit fighter. Oh, the pit fighter, Kumal. <laughs> so he, he's like the, the real... It's like Conan the Destroyer. That's right, that's, that's yeah. right. Well, listen, you know, we've had Airman Grove, that's so, right. I, you know, Kumal the pit fighter... He, well, that's taking him to a new, whole new level, though. I, that's fighter. a good point. I mean, yeah. that's frightening. Seriously. I'm a little, I'm a little scared. He, he, Kumal asks, why do some champions in the WWE work harder than others? I'm hmm. not sure if I understand that, that question. Do you know what he's mean? Like, work harder, no, I, I mean, to get there? I, I think I get, get what be, he's talking to about. To get to be champion? Uh, he's probably talking about referring to the overall package. Ah, so I see what you're saying. Some champions, and and let's let's take the Miz for example. All right, here's a guy who does it all. Okay, he he goes on the television show, mm -hmm. talks you into the seats. Here's another guy who learned from Ric Flair, so he gives great promos right. and what have you, and he makes you either upset with him or cheer him, but he evokes emotion out of you. He's pulling something out of you just from talking. Then he goes in the ring and he does his job. Miz is a very good wrestler. I mean, he's won every title in the company. He's going to be a Hall of Famer in the future. But then he takes it to another level. They can count on the Miz to do all the promos and interviews outside of the wrestling ring. So he's very well-versed in the media relations aspect of things, and they even have him acting in a bunch of movies. So there's a guy who busts his hump, and he's literally doing everything. Well, it's probably because he can do it. That's not, true. Not everybody can. That's a fact. Not everybody yeah. is a great promo guy. That's right. Some guys are great in the ring, yep. great athletes. I, I always think about people are always, you know, when you see an athlete in another sport, uh, football, baseball, and they interview them. They don't give great interviews. True. They're good athletes. They can They're get not, the job done on, right. the, on the field. And, 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 and how, many, how many athletes have tried to become, say, sportscasters or announcers, and it doesn't translate. Yeah. So I think that maybe if these guys are working harder, it's because they can and they need them to. It's a good point. It's a good point. And that's the reason why you'll pair certain wrestlers with a manager right. to do the talking for them, to do that extra stuff for them, because they may be lacking in that 
arena. So you you have it right there, Boston Bad Boy. I agree with you. Wow, and, that's can we can we write that down or something? You agree with me? Oh, listen, I'm mean, hang on. I'm gonna just put the date here and the time. Kamal okay. the Pit Fighter. Thank you. Some work harder than others because the others just. Can't it's like it. me, how I work harder than Duke oh, uh, to keep the show break. going this guy. Uh, and he, keep things moving along. He you will know? put himself over at the drop of a dime. I mean, this guy is just what I do. Move on to the next, next question. question. comes from Ray Fox with two X's. <laughs> is, wait, is it Ray Fox with two X's his name, or is it Ray Fox, and we're just is that just a note for me that there's two X's? Because you, you always prep me on these people's names. Half the time I think you're making them up for them. Oh, yeah, sure. And you're just playing into this sure. insanity. But, you know, Ray Fox is part of the Duke's wrestling crew. Yeah. And and it's Ray Fox with two X's. Right. That's, that's who he is. I don't. You know. Jamie Fox, he have two X's. Yes. That's who, okay. Yes. So he's taking a play out of that. There's a precedent, I guess. That's what I'm. You know. <laughs> exactly. But they don't call him Jamie Fox with two X's. Is it just because he's famous and our friend here? Is That's right. not there yet. He's he's working his way up there. Is is Seamus and Cesaro the new Benoit and Kurt Angle? That's the most ridiculous question I, I've heard in a long time. Are, are you kidding me? Are are you really going to soil the good name of the legendary Canadian crippler Chris Benoit <laughs> and the Olympic hero Kurt Angle and, and try to say Seamus and Cesaro? Are they the same? Are you kidding me? No. He didn't say the same. He said the next. Oh, I don't believe so at all because, first of all, Sheamus can't wrestle anywhere near as good as Benoit or Kurt Angle. And Cesaro, he's a pretty good wrestler, but he doesn't have the same charisma as uh, Benoit or Kurt Angle. So, no, they're not going to be the next. And, in fact, I, it, they just paired those two up as a tag team, Sheamus and Cesaro, and I think it's a terrible idea. I, it doesn't even make sense to me. These guys need to be split up. Put Cesaro on SmackDown. Leave Sheamus on Raw. They had the best of seven series, so now you got to split them up. Move on. Give them separate gimmicks and separate ways to go here. You so, know what's a good idea to move on to the next yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. That's Ray Fox with two X's. Come on. Yeah. Stop. Maybe we can get Jamie Fox to ask the question next Jamie time. Jamie Fox and it might, would have a better, and, question. And have a better question. Yeah, yeah, come on. And the next question is from... I'm not reading that name. <laughs> I'm not, this is it. I'm, I'm hitting my limit here. Well, that's You want to know why? Because you wrote, the name of the person is Baby Wheat Bread. That's not a name. <laughs> what do you want? I don't name these folks. I mean, it's I'm not a right name. Now, that's what. That's what the name is. Is it wheat or wheat? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Cool Family whip. guy. <laughs> wheat. Yeah. Cool whip. <laughs> so, baby, we, I've hit a this new low guy. in my career. I've hit a new low in my, my career. I'm reading questions. You're from earning someone it named today, baby, pal. Baby you, wheat bread. Baby wheat bread. That's the best name ever. Listen to that. <sighs> All right. Why don't? <laughs> I can't even <laughs> read this question. Why doesn't WWE have more variety in the women's division in terms of size? Most of them are tiny, which makes Nia Jax stand out because she's so much bigger than the rest. Uh-oh. WWE needs more big, strong women like Nia so she doesn't run up people to, be, to beat up. Oh, boy. I, I, baby wheat bread. I thought bread. size doesn't matter. I've been told that my whole life. Was I'm I being sure lied to? I'm sure you have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, listen. <laughs> You, we're not even going to go there, Jack. Oh, my goodness. What is going on, folks? Uh, baby wheat bread. Talking about a woman's size is, is a bad road to go down, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tread lightly First of all, that's the second thing, because first thing was having a name baby wheat bread. Secondly, Which is an awesome name. It, secondly, asking a woman's size. <laughs> yeah. Continue. But, baby wheat bread. Awesome name. Uh, but I don't disagree with you, though. I, there is a, a lack of variety in terms of the... the presentation of the women let's let's call it presentation Nia Jax definitely stands out above the rest and it would be great to see somebody who's a little closer uh to who she is you know someone like um Awesome Kong that would be great uh, somebody who's smaller but is is probably just as powerful in Sienna the TNA uh former knockouts champion she's fantastic Allison K on the on the indies uh, but I agree, there should be more variety in, in, in appearance of the women in the WWE because we can't just see all these smaller ladies going up uh, against these, you know somebody like I'm Nia Jax. I'm cut you off there because I think that we're, deal we're, we're dabbling potentially in a, in a slightly non-feminist view here because let me, let me put it to you this uh -oh. way. When Andre the Giant started wrestling and he is head and shoulders above these huge dudes, did anybody say, we need some bigger dudes in, in, in wrestling? But Andre no, the Giant had Big John Studd and King Kong Bundy. Yeah, but he All was right. a big dude. He was though. a big he dude. Was but he wasn't those. that much bigger than them. He was. 
significantly bigger than most of the guys, though. All right, he had the two. Those Hulk two guys. Hogan was almost the same height as Andre the Giant. Give me yeah, a but break. Girth. We're no talking one is about as girth. big as Nia Jax. But my <laughs> point is, no one was saying that when it was a dude that was bigger. Oh, give me now a we're break. saying women. Tr- <laughs> women biologically are just. S- on average, smaller than men, shorter okay. than men, less body mass. But there are bigger women That's out right. there. But you can't, you know, you can't say, "Well, we got one." We, you know, listen, you got to give everyone a shot. If baby wheat bread asks a question, size doesn't matter. Oh, baby yeah, wheat see bread. That? That's how we're going to end this. You're out of your mind. Yeah. You know, you know we're going to move on to my question. I'm sick of this. Oh, we don't. Oh we're my dabbing. Buddha. We don't need your question. No, okay, you know, good. we need my question because my name isn't. I, I, I I'm not. You know, <laughs> Mike, Mike Wonderbread over yeah, here. Yeah, Wonderbread. Yeah. <laughs> No one's called. Well, I've been called Wonder Bread. You've been called once, once, once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> once or twice. Right. I wonder what kind of nonsense question you. No, have this isn't this nonsense week. because this is something even a casual viewer of the sport oh, uh, can uh, pick up on. Oh boy! So y- you watch Raw every interminable hour of it. Yes, and I do. You saw that during a match, and you may have picked this up on on multiple matches. The fans. Uh, they're not really reacting the way that one would assume they would react and, and the way they've historically reacted. And by that I mean a specific instance, chanting things like CM Punk during a match that they're not particularly interested in. All right? And during the TJ Perkins match, they literally started chanting CM Punk. Okay. During the match. And so on social media, a bunch of wrestlers and fans and, uh, you know, just people who are interested started voicing displeasure. They didn't like that the fact that the wrestlers are chanting something totally irrelevant. Oh, I'm sorry, that the fans are chanting something totally irrelevant to what's going on in the ring uh, where they where they came in. So these guys are... Mo- the, the, the wrestlers are... They're bitching and moaning, basically, saying the fans aren't playing along, they're not getting into it, blah, 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 etc., etc. What's cetera, your point? So I want to know what you think, and I have a feeling I already know the answer, so I don't know why I'm asking. Are the fans being disrespectful when they're doing that, or do the wrestlers just have ego issues? Well, all right, hold on a second here, because this is this is a serious serious issue, and for the wrestlers don't have ego issues. Oh, I yeah, think Mark, I think yes, they do. I think we're going a little too far, and, and that even to suggest that is disrespectful. The fans pay to be entertained by the wrestlers. But you got to give them a chance to entertain you, and you can't be doing that when you're out there chanting somebody else's name who not only is not in the building, who not only is not in the ring, they're not even in the company. CM Punk is gone. He's getting his face gonna, punched gonna, in I'm in the UFC. You. No, okay? I'm going to stop you because you started that rant on something very important. The fans pay. They don't pay to go there to be respectful. They don't go pay there to play along. They pay to be entertained. And what they do once their butt is in that seat and their money has been collected, so long as it's not violating anybody or being rude or crass or, or, or racist or anything, so long as they're not doing that, what is the problem? The problem is they are being crass, okay? They're because crass. they're talking about something that is unrelated to what's in front mm. of them. And what they need to understand is these wrestlers put their lives on the line oh, every time they step oh, in that right. ring. They're taking all are those they bumps. Are they in the building? They're, are they they're, in the building they're, watching they're, these guys? Maybe they're bored. Maybe they should be kicked out of the building for maybe, being disrespectful hey, to the Maybe guys like TJ Perkins okay? should put on a better show. TJ Perkins is a great wrestler. He's the cruiserweight champion, and you will respect him mm. by chanting T. T.J. Perkins <laughs> and not C.M. Punk because C.M. Punk is not in the company Maybe anymore. they wish there right? was. That's Maybe the, they wish there was. I'm going I'm I'm to tell you something. Maybe there's a vacuum. And if this is like a get off my lawn situation here, then so be it. We have gotten to it's a point going that way. in society where disrespect no, We're not, this doesn't is have the be norm. A whole, and no, well, it, this it bleeds not... over into wrestling where people feel like they can just be a jerk Wherever they go. What's being they, a jerk? No, because the fans are going into business for themselves, like you do on this show, where you try to put yourself over. They're trying to put themselves over and want to talk about something when unrelated. You, so you, they can say, hey, I was a, I was a big shot. I you, talked about something else. All right. When you, you know? plunk down a significant amount of money to go somewhere. Yeah, don't you're be a jerk. Being, no, you're not being a jerk. <laughs> What's being a jerk? They're suppo- all right. All right. You're from Boston. I'm from Boston. Yeah. You've been to a Red Sox game. Unfortunately, you've been to a Red Sox game. Okay, all right. whether or not you're a fan of Red Sox, I'm gonna. All right, I'm gonna take a different turn. You've been to a Patriots game. Yeah. Okay. Now the Red Sox have a, a a a an endless rivalry with the Yankees. For anyone who doesn't know, the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox are rivals to days of old. Yep. 
anytime you go to any sporting event, be it football, baseball, hockey, uh, soccer, I, I'm assuming, people in, will start chanting, Yankees suck. Okay? Now, if you're at a football game and uh, uh, Tom Brady, if he ever makes it back, is on the field getting ready to snap the ball, and people are chanting, Yankees suck for whatever reason, and, it and doesn't it's matter. Not even, it's it not even ma- baseball. It's not even, right. It yeah. doesn't matter. They paid to go to a football game several hundreds of dollars, probably approaching $1,000 when it's all said and parking and food and everything. Have you ever heard one NFL player tweet about how uh, oh, oh wow! They weren't chanting my side of the. the oh, the home team All wasn't the time. chanting. All the time. Okay, because really? let me tell you something. It is disgraceful. I want. Well, let's it show, is it's disgraceful all the time. It's in show to me. show up at any event and start chanting about something you know what was that's disrespectful? not even unrelated I'm gonna with my to what's going on. You know out when there? people started throwing okay. batteries in baseball? In baseball, the yeah. fans would throw batteries. Yeah. That is wrong. Okay. That's dangerous. So what? That's dangerous. Yeah. All right, and that's affecting the game. You know what's you know what's dangerous when you're talking about a guy who's not even in the company and you're talking nonsense. And what's dangerous Let's is you got about... guys busting their humps in the ring, and and you got people talking about something that has nothing to do with what's going on in the ring. Maybe that should be they, a wake up call. Yeah, it's yeah, a wake up call. Well, these fans are no, jerks. No, it needs to be a wake up okay? call to the WWE. What? No. Yeah, because no, apparently Vince McMahon need... has lost the plot a little bit here. No, because what? first of all, he's letting his wrestlers. Mouth off on uh, shoot off on public on uh, social media because they're right because they're right they're defending the company has they're he come out and said anything business has he come out and said anything he doesn't have to say anything oh, he doesn't say want to say anything you know why he doesn't oh, want to say anything do it don't do you want to know it. why he doesn't want to say anything don't say it because it's all engineered it's a conspiracy that's it you know why it's a conspiracy to get oh, CM gosh. Punk back into WWE You're, are you trying to say think about this no it's so simple when you realize no it. way. No. They, they start staging matches that no one cares about. Are you kidding me? T.J. Perkins. Well, Everyone loves T.J. Perkins. Really? Because I didn't hear them Except saying I love T.J. Perkins. jerks out there who was little running jerks? their How mouth. many people were in that arena? Probably like 20,000. Yeah, 20,000. 20, little. That's a small little jerks. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Listen to me. Oh, gosh. They're engineering this because they want it to make it seem like it's a big controversy. You're out of your mind. And that way they can lure him back in and say, you know what? They, that, this way, Vince can go to CM Punk and no. say, we want you back in. Not because I do. He uh, gets the same face. No, no. Hey, listen, the fans have spoken. i got to bring you back. Not at all. And it allows him to save face no. and bring the guy back you into the company. So you were so wrong. First, Jack. You were so wrong. It is unbelievable. All I'm right. going to tell all of you out there listening right now, when you show up at a wrestling event, you be respectful. Okay? You put some respect on everybody's name They're not paying there. to be respectful. Okay? They're not, pay- they're not going it. there to be respectful. I'm pulling the plug. Folks, Thank you for listening to us again this week. We want to thank uh, Silver Fox for joining us in breaking down Clash of Champions. We want to thank the pastor of wrestling, Kevin West, for joining us there talking about Ric Flair. We got to get out of here. Head over to YouTube. Head on to Facebook, Twitter. Let us know what you think of the show. I'll tell you what I think of this show. No, no, no. It's a conspiracy, We'll be man. back next week with a, with more guests, and hopefully believe the Boston me. Bad Boy will stop acting like a crazy no, person. No, I'm telling I you. I can't believe. If Vince ever came on this show.